Good morning uh, to you all, and you're all very welcome. And uh, we will begin with the entrance antiphon. All peoples clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. My dear friends, uh, introducing the Mass, I want to say a special word of welcome to all in St. Joseph's primary school community. First of all, the children, stand up, give a wave. I know I can't see you, but I s you see me, and I hope that you're all keeping well and that you're not too disappointed being away from school. And, and uh, also to the Maguire family at Cluny, it marks the anniversary mass of Jimmy and Mary McMulkin family, the anniversary of Lawrence, Lawrence McMulkin. And uh, also John McLaughlin, England and Gushity, whose funeral will be taking place this coming Wednesday in Munshire. So we begin in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And uh, dear friends, we turn to the Lord's mercy and uh, we say it together the confit here. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seized at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we pray, Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And my dear friends, I welcome Lisa, who will read the lessons. And the first reading uh, is a reminder of the struggle of the following Christ, the struggles of the prophet. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear so many disparaging me, terror from every side, denounce him, let us denounce him. All those who used to be my friends watched for my downfall. Perhaps he will be seduced into error, then we will master him and take our revenge. But the Lord is at my side, a mighty hero. My opponents will stumble, mastered, confounded by their failure. Everlasting, unforgettable disgrace will be theirs. But you, Lord of hosts, you who probe with justice, who scrutinize the loins and heart, let me see the vengeance you will take on them, for I have committed my cause to you. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the soul of the needy from the hands of evil men. The word of the Lord. In your great love, answer me, O God. In your great love, answer me, O God. It is for you that I suffer taunts, that shame covers my face, that I have become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my own mother's sons. I burn with zeal for your house, and taunts against you fall on me. 
in your great love, answer me, O God. This is my prayer to you, my prayer for your favour. In your great love, answer me, O God, with your help that never fails. Lord, answer, for your love is kind, and your compassion turn towards me. In your great love, answer me, O God. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God-seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy, and does not spurn his servants in their chains. Let the heavens and the earth give him praise, the sea and all its living creatures. In your great love, answer me, O God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Sin entered the world through one man, and through sin, death. And thus death has spread through the whole human race, because everyone has sinned. Sin existed in the world long before the law was given. There was no law, and so no one could be accused of the sin of law-breaking. Yet death reigned over all from Adam to Moses, even though their sin, unlike that of Adam, was not a matter of breaking a law. Adam prefigured the one to come, but the gift itself considerably outweighed the fall. If it is certain that through one man's fall so many died, it is even more certain that divine grace, coming through the one man, Jesus Christ, came to so many as an abundant free gift. The word of the Lord. We greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. The word is made flesh and lived among us. To all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus instructed the twelve as follows, Do not be afraid, for everything that is now covered will be uncovered, and everything hidden will be made clear. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the daylight. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the house tops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Fear him, rather, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Can you not buy two sparrows for a penny? Yet not one falls to the ground without your father knowing it. Why, every hair on your head has been counted. So there's no need to be afraid. You're worth more than hundreds of sparrows. So if anyone declares himself for me in the presence of men and women, I will declare myself for him in the presence of my father in heaven. But the one who disowns me in the presence of men and women, I will disown in the presence of my father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, um, I was just thinking there that that statement, Jesus reassuring God's love for all of us, particularly for his disciples, when he says, why every hair in your head has been counted. Well, I was just thinking that a lot of people, a lot of the mothers and the men, fathers, teachers and everybody else, a lot of us can't be waiting we're fed up waiting for the hairdressers, the barbers and all that to open and uh, I'm sure they're going to be very busy when they reopen uh, on the second weekend of July. So, But besides that, uh, today's Mass is of course being offered as an end of year school Mass for uh, the school community we have here in our parish, uh, St. Joseph's Primary School. 
Now, indeed, that is why uh, we have the representations here in uh, the sanctuary. You know, first of all, picture the school, the school book, school jumper, and the football. Uh, a way in representing all aspects of school life and indeed uh, our school's identity. Uh, and then of course on the bigger post here we have pictures of each member of P7 who in normal circumstances, this would be their final few days at primary school and indeed they are especially in our thoughts today. But maybe my own thoughts best summed up by a message from Master Monaghan uh, to the school community. And what I'll do is I'll read that out and I'll add on just a few very, very small comments myself. Dear pupils, parents, staff, governors, and fellow parishioners, unfortunately this school year is ending, not you or I would have wanted. June is traditionally a busy month, but an exciting one to be in school. Our sports day and our school trip would have been memorable events. We would have participated in a variety of inter-school competitions in athletics and football, and our corridors would have been full of excitement in anticipation of the holidays to come and the nervousness that accompanies moving on to the next stage. Alas, this year, with the advent of the coronavirus, we have had to forego these many happy events and our corridors are silent. Today's end of year mass, however, is a beautiful occasion in which we thank God for all that has been achieved throughout the school year. We especially give thanks for our health and the fact that our school community and parish has been protected from the worst ravages of this terrible virus. We also give thanks for our wonderful children, parents, staff and governors. Without your support and help and understanding, this time would be even more challenging. I'd like to thank all our peoples for the really important role that they have played in staying at home, washing your hands and keeping their, your distance. This was something that was very difficult for you to do. Staying away from friends, cousins, grandparents was indeed a very big task. I would like you to know that in doing so, you have truly been heroes and saved lives. And for that, the uh, school classes of 2020 will go down in history as a very special group indeed. I'd like to take the opportunity to wish all our P7 pupils every happiness and success in their new schools. We're very proud of all you've achieved during your time in St. Joseph's. You've been great children to work with and we have every confidence that you will continue to do yourselves, your families and us proud in the years ahead. Best wishes, Mr. Liam Monaghan, School Principal. And indeed, uh, Mr. Monaghan, thank you for uh, those comments. And may I also endorse them. And uh, just to say again, a personal word of compliment to the school community in what has been uh, an extraordinary year, maybe the most, one of the most extraordinary years, in the, if not the most extraordinary year in the history of the school, and indeed the history of schooling in the parish. Uh, but nevertheless, um, I have been deeply impressed by your dedication, especially to keep um, the learning going uh, in providing uh, lessons for homeschooling. May I also say a complimentary word to the parents. Obviously this has been a very tough time for yourselves. I know a lot of you um, may have lost jobs or couldn't go to work uh, and uh, 
maybe a lot of you were working from home and had to combine homeschooling uh, with your work or with your activities and so on. It hasn't been easy for you. And of course, as Mr. Monaghan mentioned, the children and what they missed out on, not just in terms of learning, but all the fun and the excitement that there is, particularly in the weeks of June, as we move towards the summer holidays. P7, of course, I spoke to you a few weeks ago on the Feast of Pentecost, and of course, we'll always remember you, and also on my own behalf, I wish you all the best, uh, all blessings from, uh, from God upon you. And I would ask you now to please stand. And uh, we profess our faith. We say it together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things are made. For us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism of forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> Today, Jesus urges us not to be afraid in our Christian lives and reminds us that God the Father who created us knows us intimately and loves us with an everlasting love. Remember all in our school community of St. Joseph's Primary School. Remember especially the pupils in P7 who are completing their primary education and preparing for secondary school. Help them to grow in faith, hope and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the grace to be worthy sons and daughters of the Father and of the promise of eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask you, Lord, to help us in everything we do. Give us strength when we are weak and protect us from all dangers during this pandemic. May we remember your words, do not be afraid. And may we always trust that you are looking over each one of us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, Lord, that as your followers, we may have the courage to be your witnesses in a hostile and unbelieving world. We pray for the grace and the wisdom to be true to your way and live our lives in accordance with your teaching. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Pope Francis, Bishop Larry, and to all who minister in the church to lead the people in the Lord's light and protection. We ask you, Lord, to help those preparing our churches for the resumption of Masses, that they may be guided by the Spirit to ensure a spiritual and safe homecoming for all the faithful. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, Lord, for the sick and the suffering, that they may experience your calming presence and bring peace and tranquility into their lives. We ask you, Lord, to heal all those who are ill from COVID-19, who are suffering from cancer and from other illnesses of the mind, body or spirit, especially those who are in hospital or awaiting the results of tests. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those working on the front line, our health workers, nurses, doctors and carers, that they may have time to rest and recover from their work that they may be protected from the virus and that their work bears the fruit of healthy and grateful people and communities. 
we pray for all those who are providing essential services, that their work be accepted with gratitude, and that they will remain healthy at this difficult time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Today, as we celebrate Father's Day, we give thanks for the gift of our fathers, both the living and deceased. We ask you, Lord, to bless them and reward them for their kindness and care. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Remember our faithful departed, especially Jimmy and Mary Maguire Clunny, and Lawrence McMulkin, whose anniversaries we mark today. Remember also John McLaughlin and Lavinia Sweeney, all others who have died recently, and deceased pupils and teachers of St. Joseph's Primary School. May they always live in your mercy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we have any personal private intentions. Make them now in a few moments of silence. Lord, hear us. Lord our Father, you teach us to seek your love above all other things. May we be true to this calling through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed you, Lord God of all creation, to your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given us in human hands have made and become for us the bread of life. Blessed you, Lord God of all creation, to your goodness we have this wine to offer, through the vine also work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that tonight's sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the things by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty under salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all angels we, and all saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the point of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held this worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Only we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Larry our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember, sorry, just a moment. Remember your servants, Jimmy and Mary McGuire, and Lawrence McMulkin, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant the day who you are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we have merit to be co heirs to eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now at our Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In thy kingdom come, and thou will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in your days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We just now pause for a moment. And we wish other, especially all St. Joseph's School community, I wish you peace and happiness, especially this summer. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with joy. O oh Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, my dear friends, uh, that brings us to the end of uh, our. Uh, school mass. Uh, 
The one thing about difficulties and the whole difficulty fact that we quit and gather helps us be creative. So uh, P7, together with Mrs. O'Hagan, and I managed to pull together a beautiful booklet. I don't know if you can see it here, but um, I know there's copies for everybody in P7 and indeed the school staff, but I must say it's a wonderful one and uh, so well done to everybody involved and uh, to of course all in P7 I hope to get some opportunity we'll be meeting for confirmation I promise you that uh, at least that'll be an opportunity to say a goodbye but when we do get back to whatever normality will be hopefully we'll see you particularly our mass service and um, again the gospel says today to don't be afraid go forward it's a very exciting time to be a young person okay there are lots of dangers as we all know but it still is a very exciting time and you have so much to look forward to in your lives so may God be with you all and I know you've been learning Spanish so today is este con todos ustedes God bless you all now, uh, I want to say a few words just to parishioners. Uh, we have a statement in the parish bulletin, and we have it online on our parish Facebook pages. And indeed, we have been getting it out to the different WhatsApp groups in the community, and that is uh, regarding the reopening of our churches which we have got to go ahead to do so from Monday week onwards. But we're really targeting the first weekend of July. That's the 5th of July, Sunday the 5th of July, when we can have a public mass in some way in uh, our churches. Uh, first of all, I want to say that whatever it is about how easy it was to close the whole thing down, it's not going to be nearly as easy reopening and that's for sure because it will it'll also be uh, pretty costly as well uh, because I have you know, already spent nearly a thousand pounds on all the equipment and sanitizing liquid and so on that we will need when we reopen plus the fact we will also be having a deep clean of both churches before the reopening and uh, so it comes to the guts of at least uh, £1,500 but uh, having said that you know there are two extremes that really have to avoid first of all the extremes of casualness we have to reopen with the utmost care that we know that you know there has been you know, Fermanagh essentially has been one of the safest counties, not the safest in the whole country. But nevertheless, we also know from our daily news reports that the virus hasn't gone away. Uh, and we still have to be extremely careful. Uh, in that way, I to say that again, anybody that is vulnerable, and that is the elderly, those over 70, and uh, those who have uh, an ongoing illness, especially respiratory ailments, uh, that uh, for the time being you should stay at home and join us by live streaming. Uh, also, we will be strongly encouraging people to wear face masks or face coverings uh, when in the church uh, and uh, churches obviously will have to be cleaned before and after each gathering however the other extreme is you know extreme fear that can totally paralyze us uh, the message is becoming strongly across from all the experts and the professionals is that if we take the ordinary and necessary precautions 
like cleaning our hands, you know, wearing face masks. Uh, also, when we cough and sneeze, we do so into our, our arm uh, rather than put our hand over our mouth. Uh, you know what I mean? The coronavirus, I've been told, indeed, Dr. O'Hare uh, would have come to me at the start of the whole thing with PPE and said it's not a hard virus to kill, it's just getting rid of it that's the problem. Uh, and also, you know, the, the church is pretty safe and I know we have no surfacing at the moment, but uh, every day when I'm opening the church, I go to the doors, the handles, door panes and all that with disinfectant and clean them. Indeed, you'll see the stains of disinfectant on some of the door pans, door panes. Uh, I also go to areas where the people may go to pray, so just the shrines, the statues, uh, the Divine Mercy corner over here, uh, or Ladies Chapel, and I clean those areas, wipe those areas as well with disinfectant. And also here in front of the altar, anniversary book, I clean it on a daily basis, the cover of it, and I clean the altar rails around it. And, you know, thankfully nobody's got an infection that can be traced back to either of our churches. So our churches are, are quite safe. However, uh, we will need uh, quite a number of volunteers for keeping the church clean and also helping to usher and to steward the whole uh, process of reopening. And uh, like I say, we're going to take it, you know, practice social distancing and so on. I forgot to mention that in the church as well. And uh, all volunteers who come forward to help will be provided with the basic protective equipment that is face masks and with gloves. So now normally people nowadays who volunteer for church activities are usually older people but this time we can't have that. We're looking for a younger group of people and if enough people come forward then you know uh, everything should be safe and uh, also it means that you know, people will not be having to give up too much of their time. So I appeal for uh, volunteers. And by the way, in relation to the cleaning, uh, Wayne Little of Cleaning Doctor will be providing uh, instructions for those cleaning in the churches uh, at 4 p.m. on Friday evening if anybody is available. be more welcome. To come along. Anyway, I wish you all the best. I see the Premiership is up and running, and uh, Liverpool supporters will be tuning in this afternoon with great enthusiasm. Uh, also, Leeds United are playing. I'm a Leeds supporter, and I share the whole thing with Liverpool. We are very strong in the running for promotion, so I was hoping that we would get promoted this year but and of course good news on the GA front as well that please God the football hurling matches will be returning at club level uh, in the middle of July so uh, it's good to hear but anyway I uh, hope you all have a good weekend and uh, also farewell for the time being to all in our school community the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And by the way, children, don't go away. I'm going to play when we go back into the sanctuary. This little light of mine, let it shine. <laughs>